I'm going to show you how to make one of these rope bowls. One of the things I like about the rope that I use is that the bowls are firmer and not floppy. I've used rope from other stores um, than the one I'll show you. And they just don't hold their shape and they're really floppy. So that's what I recommend. And then I also like to finish the the bowls off with a strip of leather. And I usually do like an inch and a half width and then however long and then sew them on at the end. Okay, so the two ropes that I've used that I like, I found at Walmart. There's just two different brands. Um, they're like three forty-four a piece and you can't find them online anywhere. At least I haven't been able to find them online. Um, not even at walmart.com, so you have to get them at the store in the hardware section. And it is clothesline rope. It's a cotton poly blend, and it's 3 sixteenths of an inch and 100 feet long. So I have tried thicker thread in a different brand, and, or th thicker rope, not thread, in a different brand, and it sewed fine under my presser foot, but it was the floppier um, brand of rope that made the bowl kind of floppy. So just keep that in mind. Um, so a few things about the machine before we get started. I'm using my regular presser foot that will let me do a zigzag stitch. And I'm using a size 16 needle. And I'm using, right now I'm using a cotton, 100% cotton thread. And I like to get it on the cones because I'm going to use a lot of thread. And I also wind a bunch of bobbins because you're going to go through a lot of thread. I also use the um, zigzag stitch on the four out of five, just because I and I have used it on the five before, and that's fine. I just like the look of the four better. And then my stitch length is a two. So. Um, if you have any other questions about like what to do or what setting or whatever, let me know. Um, so the way to start, and this is important, is to start winding your rope around clockwise, which is around to the right instead of around counterclockwise or to the left. When I did my first one, I did this one to the left and or counterclockwise and it was going under my machine so therefore I couldn't make the bowl so I made a trivet and that's also a, another way to finish it if you don't want to do the leather and you can do that on the bowls too okay so to get started you're gonna wind it around clockwise like I've done there and um, <clears throat> also you need to trim off both ends of your rope because they'll come burned like that so they're not fraying. So you'll trim them and because you don't want to break a needle on that. So you're going to go um, and wind it around about the size of a quarter and then stick pins in um, from four different sides. And then I'm going to start by zigzagging down the center back and forth a couple of times and then I'll come to the center and turn it and go back and forth a couple of times. And then I'm going to start not right in the center zigzagging around, but I'm going to start about, you know, out that far. And I'm going to start zigzagging around in the circle. And so I'll show you that far. Take the pins out, trim your thread, and then you're ready to start. 
start going around. So if it gets awkward as you're sewing, especially in this first part because the circle is so small, lift up your presser foot as much as you need to. But one thing you shouldn't do is pull as you're sewing. If you do, it can actually make your bowl kind of weird, especially in the bottom. I had a friend, hers kind of came up in the bottom and so please don't pull it as you go. She did have 100% cotton thread, so, or rope. So as you're, as you're sewing around, the important thing is to look and make sure that you have the, the two, like the seam in the rope, the two ropes together, that you're getting the stitch on both sides. So I like to look in the hole in my presser foot and just make sure that I have the two seams together. So as you start, especially at this first part, you have it stitched tight. It's going to start wrapping around and it's going to get in your way so you can mix your needles down. You can lift that up and just twist it and, and get that surrounding rope out of your way. And then you can just keep going and then it's going to go a lot quicker. And it gets easier as you start sewing and going around. So you're just going to keep sewing. I have another piece that I'm going to show you where I'm at. So on this piece, I've gone around a few times. Um, so now I'm going to just keep sewing and making my base bigger. So on some of the bowls that I've made, so on this bowl that I showed you in the beginning, it's seven inches across here before I start rounding the corners. And this bowl is also seven inches. The round starts right here and then comes all the way around. So you get a very, a really nice curve as you're going. This bowl, however, has a six inch base here. And adding these handles is super easy. So don't, all of these are super easy. So don't worry, okay. So I'm gonna just start and back stitch. And if you run out of bobbin thread or have a tension problem, you can, Anytime you can just start over and just make sure you back stitch so your thread isn't coming in there. So another thing is I like to sew at a steady pace um, and not push my pedal all the way down. If I do that the machine tends to have tension issues because the machine can't keep up with me um, because it's a zigzag stitch, it just can't keep up with that without causing problems. So I like to go a medium speed and I just um, try and stay consistent and not stop and start super quick. So I have the rope, this is how I like to hold it, I have the rope coming through and I have my finger right here under my presser foot. I've never sewn my finger, you're going to be fine. But I'm just going to turn it with my left hand and hold it with my right, and I, so I'm not pulling it at all or pulling it like this to get it tight. You don't need to do that. It naturally will feed it in with, if you just hold it light. So 
since sometimes the rope will do that, I'll just stop and twist it and keep going. I am making sure, like I said before, that both of the rope pieces are coming together. So keep making sure you do that. If you miss a spot, just go back and stitch it. Don't try and unpick it. Just go back and stitch it. I've done that and it works just fine. So you could make a coaster too, or trivets, or you know whatever you want to do. You could make a placemat, really. It's all up to you and your imagination. It is nice to have your rope all the way undone because you don't have to keep messing with trying to unravel it, but it does get twisted a little. Just keep going. No matter what size bowl you make, your base is going to be done the exact same way. Um, you do need to decide like how wide you want the base to be, but this whole first part is going to be done the exact same way no matter which way you do. So. gets to the point where it kind of rotates on its own you just need to be there to stabilize it so it's making sure it gets those two ends of the rope together
there's a part right there that I missed. So I'm totally just going to come back here. So I don't want that to separate on me. And go right there. Because I went a little too far, otherwise I would just back stitch. And just keep going. doing a curve. Normally I would make the base a little bit bigger, but I'm making a few different styles of bolts right now. So, so now you're going to start to elevate the bowl a little, uh, or the base a little, with your left hand. And just keep it, so the key to getting a great curve at the bottom of the bowl is to keep your hand, your left hand in the same position, the same elevation for like th three to five times around the base. Um, if you do it too quick, like if I go once and then I go up here and go one more time and then go up here, it's going to have ridges and it's not going to have that nice smooth curve. So you just start sewing around and fold it and feed it. doing that, I'm going to stop and show you the next step, but you're going to keep doing that after you've gone around four or five times, then you're going to go a little bit steeper in, in what you're holding, and then of course it just keeps getting steeper, and eventually you'll end up right next to the machine. Okay, so on this bowl, I've obviously gone a lot further. I have a nice curve happening. So now I'm, I'm getting to the point where I need to decide what I kind of want the bowl to look like. If I want it to be, you know, have this, this nice angled curve, I'm only going to keep it out like this as I'm sewing it around. With some of these others, as I sew it around, it obviously gets steeper and gets around the head of the machine. And even towards the end on this one, I even curved it up like this, so it has a nice curve that kind of comes back up. And then this one, similar, but this one I just kept straight, like straight right up. So, I'm going to show you, probably going to run out of bobbin soon, okay, and you will need to clean the machine afterwards, there's going to be a lot of lint, okay, so now I'm just going to back stitch, and then I'm going to Make sure I just hold it at the right angle.
sometimes the rope gets tangled and twisted, so you just have to undo it. Just remember to start back up with the same angle that you were at before. Oh, I need to turn my thread. idea here. On this bowl I'm going to have it come out like the one with the handles. Um, if you do want it to um, have a, a straighter up and down um, mold to the bowl, definitely bring it up higher like this as you're sewing. And you can, it, it's really easy to hold it, it's not hard, you'll get it, the hang of it as you start sewing. Um, I'm going to stop there though and show you this end piece. So this is the piece of leather that I have used and then I'll cut it into one and a half inch strips and sometimes I'll do a longer one, sometimes I'll just do a one and a half inch square and then when I get to the end, so you're going to sew all the way to the end, make sure you trim the rope, you'll have sewn all the way to the end. And then I just take this piece and just fold it over. I fold it, I actually like to fold it in half to make sure that I get that good and even on both sides. And then you just hold it down and stitch it. I wouldn't pin it because you'll make a hole in the leather. I have used these red wonder clips to hold it in place before. Let me just pull it out and show you. These Wonder Clips are great because they have a flat bottom, so I just go stick it on like that, and then I would put it under here and stitch it, and make sure you put your machine back on your straight stitch. Um, really, you can make any sh kind of shape, it really just depends on how you're going to hold it. Just Make sure that you do that gradual um, elevation on the side as you go so that you can get those nice curves just like that. So please share your rope balls and I hope this helped. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.